tonight, Iceland in crisis, as the president has defied parliament, responding to popular protests. President Grimson vetoed a bill to repay more than $5 billion to Britain and the Netherlands, money those countries paid out to investors when, they're, of course, Iceland's banks went belly up. Iceland has been forced to take the money when it didn't have the funds to compensate depositors in its shattered banks. Tonight, we're going to examine what this will mean for Iceland's economic future, its political future, and, of course, whether it will threaten vital economic aid to Iceland from the European Union and its membership. Iceland's troubles began when it was hit head-on by the global financial crisis. Come and join me over here as we talk of the painful year of adjustment. Iceland's banks had taken massive risks with much of their investment from borrowed money, borrowed on the international money market, which, of course, the credit market shut down spectacularly in 2008. When that hurricane came, it brought Iceland's banks crashing down. The government was forced to take control of the major banks. Glitner, Landsbanki and Kalpting. Hundreds of millions of dollars belonging to savers, particularly overseas in the UK and the Netherlands, was frozen. In November, Iceland got a $10 billion loan from the IMF and European and Nordic neighbours. It was even rumoured that Russia was going to come to the rescue. $10 billion. But Iceland in July... Joined, applied to join the European Union. That's a process that won't be helped by the latest altercation. Over the $5.5 billion that Britain and the Netherlands had to shell out to compensate investors in Ice Saves banks. Now, the British and the Dutch governments have the obligation to pick up the bill. The Icelandic Parliament had agreed to pay the money back to Britain and the Netherlands, and now it's the president who is refusing to sign that into law. That's the timeline of the crisis. Jim Bolden, who joins me now, was in Iceland at the time of the crisis and joins me to talk about it. Jim, President Grimson's decision not to bear or not to sign the bill, is it a constitutional or an economic or any crisis? I, I don't know that it's an economic crisis yet. It is a very popular move on his part. The Icelandic people, it's, it's, it's been estimated that it would cost each one of them $20,000 equivalent per person if this vote had gone through, if this bill had been signed into law. That's why you've seen so, these so incredible... So why did they sign it? Why did they sign it? Why I mean, they... why are they bailing them out? Why are, is the Icelandic government bailing out the British and the Dutch if they know it's an unpopular measure with their own people? Well, that's why it was a very close vote in the parliament. That's why it took so many changes and permutations and happened just before the new year. Uh, and it was by no means a popular vote. It was some of the uh, major parties were for it. But obviously, the president seems to think that it's, this is a better way to go than now allowing the, the Icelandic people to vote in this referendum. So, so President Grimson isn't saying no to a bailout. He's basically saying no to, until the people have individually approved this. It's, it's, in, it's interesting why he specifically decided to take this step, which is a very rare step within the constitution of Iceland. Because, as you say, the government decided that this was the, the best of the bad deals that have been coming through. But we have to remember, in the end, the Dutch government, very unhappy. The British government, very unhappy by this. They thought that this deal had finally been settled. Uh, and remember, it's their money that they've actually given to their own citizens. This money didn't even go through Iceland. This was Britain loaning money, kind of loaning money to Iceland to pay back the British savers and I save. Is this likely to have an implication to Britain, uh, to, to Iceland's application to join the European Union? Well, it, it, that's a long-term project. It's not going to happen until 2012 at least. So it, it, in May in the short run. Let's see where the vote goes. Let's see what the reaction is to people. But, you know, they, they still need to get more money from the IMF. They haven't gotten that yet either. Stay with me, join in our discussion, because the petition against repaying the money was signed by a quarter of Iceland's voters and was organised by a protest group called In Defence. It calls the bill a crushing economic burden. On the line now, from Iceland, via broadband, one of the founders of the group, the economist Magnus Skulason. Mr Skulason, President Grimson's decision not to sign the bill 
Uh, clearly, what are you hoping happens next? Well, uh, thanks, Jim. I must correct you on one thing. Actually, the Icelandic Parliament passed a bill uh, in the end of August with some safeguards to, save, to safeguard the Icelandic economy so Iceland would pay part of the, of the GDP growth to the British and the Dutch. Uh, and by that agreement, well, we haven't had a formal answer from the British and the Dutch regarding that, but they demanded more. So they demanded a, a, an a unreasonable ISAF agreement. So actually the parliament spent like three months last summer just over trying to find a, a reasonable solution to this at a staggering 5.55% interest. But uh, 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 on a deal that would be more in accordance to actually the promise right. of the European Union from November 2008, okay. also on the restoration of the Icelandic economy. But is your, is your fundamental opposition, uh, Magnus, that any money is paid to the British and the Dutch investors, or is it just Absolutely the not. amount of money? Absolutely not. We, of course, we want to fulfill our legal obligation according to the European Union Depository Guarantee Scheme, and that's natural. And, and we have said to, we would do so. The Iceland government has stated so clearly all the way since no, October last year when the crisis started. But we have to understand that we had a total systematic breakdown on our, on our banking system. Uh, the British government used the anti-terrorist legislation to freeze the asset, probably because they, right. they were irritated because of Lehman Brothers at that time. Now, Magnus, this is Jim Bolden. We had another ratings downgrade, this time from Fitch Ratings this afternoon, because of this decision by the president. So you, 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 your currency is still controlled. It's still very weak. You have a, a, a difficult problem trying to explain this to the rest of the world, why Iceland is not taking the step that many people thought would actually help the economy to recover in 2010. Well, as Jim said, this is like $20,000 per head, and that's, uh, that's a staggering amount. And, and, uh, and the Fitch rating, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if they had the, the correct information, uh, if they knew that actually the Parliament, Iceland Parliament, right. already passed the ISAF deal in August with some safeguards, and that should actually be more positive that, that Icelanders okay. were responsible and trying to pay out the money instead of having a, a riskier contract that is now in, uh, has now been vetoed by the president. Ma Magnus, this is Richard Quest again. Uh, I'm just wondering, is, this a, is President Grimson in, in taking this action? He's clearly in accordance with what the popular wishes are. But bearing in mind the elected government has passed this bill, is this a constitutional issue at the same time? Well, the president has, has said that he he's, he is uh, that, that the, actually this is his right according to the constitution because he's he's elected in a in a in a, in an election uh, directly from the public. Right. And and he has done so today. And uh, so, a what could happen? Uh, there could be a referendum in two months' time, but maybe that's too long. Uh, the government of Iceland could actually withdraw the current bill and go. Go back to the Dutch and the Netherlands, uh, Dutch uh, uh, and the British, and say, "Well, let's take the August uh, bill that was right. actually passed by the gov by the government and by the Parliament, and, and ac actually as well by the President." Or uh, thirdly, uh, we could uh, build up a new negotiation to, to a more reasonable solution. Thank you very much, Magnus Gullason, joining Thank us you very from much. Reykjavik. Your and uh, Jim Bolton, of course, with me here in London. You'll keep watching this yep. for us in the future.